Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Kidney Crew Sensation Podcast, and I'm Bread Boy, and I just moved halfway across the country. Everyone, grab your champagne glasses, get ready to savor some bottles, because today we're talking about the end of Steins Gate. Joined with me today, we have Austin. I have unleashed the power in my right arm to join you today. Freelance. Hello. Grimmel. Ready for some more chuny bullshit. The last of the chuny bullshit, in fact. Lapo! Lapo doodle do, my nephus. <laughs> we go. We have the Vegemite Man. Hello, I'm the Vegemite Man. Rumpel Stiltskin! <laughs> Hello, I'm the Vegemite Man. You suck. <laughs> and last you but suck. not least, Nolo the YOLO himself. Oh, oh piss off. And Wonderful. yeah, today we're ga- today we're gathered, dearly beloved, to talk about the end of a journey. What 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 did everyone think? Let's get some general impressions. Well, I wouldn't call it the best visual novel of all time, like a lot of people seem to. But I am not like I'm not about to be contrarian about it. It was still fucking great. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm of the same opinion there. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. this is like the second VN I've ever completed. So, <laughs> was it it's always this. Worse? It's only this and Kato Shoujo, and they're both pretty good. But I, I like this a lot more. I, I, I yeah. wait. I actually find this kind of interesting, since you haven't read a ton of free, uh, visual novels, freelance. Uh, yeah. How do? How? In what ways did you find this like similar, dissimilar, better than Kato Shoujo? Well. There weren't routes to go down, so there weren't exactly routes to go down, just endings in this, so that it made it a lot less painful when you found out one of them was shit. I was did waiting you, for him did you like, to be like, did you like starters, starters? Nobody's crippled. <laughs> <laughs> did you like having the kind of one core story that Steins Gate has, as opposed to the, you know, bunch of branching stories of Kadawa Shoujo? Uh, I, I like the straightforwardness of this of the story, but I mean, I also like branching stories. Yeah. But in this case, you know, it was it was a nice break, I guess. Yeah, I think it, I think it's pretty interesting to go from Kato Shoujo to Steins Gate. I think, as, <laughs> as I'm sure <laughs> is, uh, is obvious now that we've come to the end of the journey here, that these are pretty distinct stories. Well, listen, listen, <laughs> when you think about it, that's what we did. We went from Kato Shoujo to Steins Gate. Hey! Life imitates art. Yeah, and Steins Gate, of course, has different endings too to its ultimate narrative, as we'll as we'll see. And I think the quality varies mm. between mm. them, as does kind of the mm. message. Well, well, I think the like, in my opinion, the ending that Steins Gate has was very much worth all of the bullshit I had to get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was worth the Ferris and Luca routes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just, you just know, play. I love shut up. Novel. I won't fuck you tonight. Visual novel, <laughs> uh, uh, pretty good. I think its best points are its character development and uh, its take on time travel. But uh, um, all in all, it didn't really blow me away. Well, it looks like someone's mm-hmm. not getting any tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Get wrecked. No, oh. he's not gonna get wrecked. Damn. <laughs> much, <laughs> much so tired. tired. Much like Novel of Alternative, I don't think this VN deserves the spot it has on VNDB. But also, VNDB is also a website that has Sengoku Rants over Air and Tsukihime, so it shouldn't be trusted anyway. Well, it could be, a, it, also, it is a matter of opinion. Yeah, I, I, th- I still think Steins Gate is pretty good, and I think it's a, a worthy read for any uh, visual novel. Uh, yeah, yeah, if nothing else, I understand, perhaps even more than with Model Novel's Alternative, I understand why Steins Gate is so popular. It definitely appeals yeah. to a very certain kind of, like, otaku demographic. And that's not to say that that's all who can enjoy it. I think it has plenty of good points, and I don't, uh, I don't think I'm one of those, those inred otaku. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it is, uh, I don't think being number two best visual novel ever is quite, is quite fair. I don't think that's fair to Steins Gate, that people, for people to come in with that expectation to begin with, let alone do I think, you know, even beyond how much I think it deserves it. Well, let's get right into it. Well, let's get right into digging into these last two chapters here. So, much like with the end of chapter 
uh, or rather, I should say, the start of chapter six, seven, seven. Yeah, the start of chapter seven. I liked, I like this first part here. I like Okabe addressing and owning up to his actions in terms of like the sacrifices that he has to make. I like that when he did it with Suzuha, and well, the impact is not nearly as heavy as with Suzuha because it's Luca being a boy again and not Suzuha. <laughs> living out her life and dying i thought that m moment was tender and even though it's even though the idea is of course that luca has lost happiness i like how it kind of taps into sort of the message of the end of luca's route that it'll be okay regardless because they have this bond yeah. too bad luca doesn't matter anymore but <laughs> you know that's yeah, bad it's enough. really too bad luca gets well, he's shafted gone. just like ferris until the very end <laughs> Yeah, Luke and Luke and Ferris, as as we've ta tapped into in our other podcasts, very much don't don't get treated with the gusto that the rest of the characters do. Which is a shame because I feel like if they, if they really if they really got in depth with these characters, you know, more than just a fucking Ryanite tournament or a date, I feel like there's a lot of potential for them to be really kind of deep characters. Yeah, I think this is. Like, not to get, I guess, too far into our same discussion from last time, but I think this would, would be a very easy problem to fix. I don't think it would have been... It would have taken too many edits to the script to just make Luca and Ferris just a slightly more involved part of the story. Just that being said, how I, I think Luca kind of really, really his final moment here when Okabe sort of has to confront that again is, is, there is touching regardless. Very much. I couldn't help but like to me obviously i can't speak for everybody and this sounds kind of cliche or lame or whatever but i feel like even if you're not a fan of luca you couldn't help but like luca at this point in the story yeah now what i want to know is oh oh go on ah uh, no worries i was just gonna say um i know that i saw rennie post something to this effect it's the same thing myself um this was the first time i had a hard time sending the message like this isn't I didn't accidentally stumble on this route it just happened I kept clicking through because I wanted to see what Luca would say because she at the time was so was so traumatized by all this and it just felt more natural than the other routes I think yeah yeah I, I think mo mo at least much more so than Ferris that Luca's <laughs> But, like the, the actual dependency of, of Luca on Okabe and vice versa felt much more genuine to me. Oh, time to kill your dad. Yeah. I'm just imagining that's what Okabe is <laughs> saying to Ferris. Well, Ferris, I'm sorry, but it's time. It's just like it's time to pop phone, Ferris to like, Well, time for daddy to die. <laughs> I'm right, man. Now, what I want to know is what did everyone think of Moeka before this moment? Because, well, I think CERN is a... I don't think CERN is a very good villain. Mostly because uh, they never feel justified. Mm -hmm. I never... Th the story never tries to let you empathize with CERN. They Can just I... kind of seem evil for evil's sake. But I think Moeka is a bit different. We get to see a bit more into what makes Moeka Moeka and the tragedy behind her character. But yes, Magus, talk about... T tell us about CERN. Look... look. You guys know, every single podcast, I've been like, yo, I can't wait for the bit where we get to find out how CERN knows about the other yeah. alternate timeline, and we get to see why their actions are justified. And, and we also telling you that's scene, not going to happen. <laughs> and also the scene where we get to go into CERN's, like, facility. Life is like on the side of the antagonist ball. I mean, France. maybe. Anything is possible. None of that happened, and I was supremely disappointed. Um, <laughs> I, I had to because... fight this entire series of podcasts telling you that no, I know, CERN I know. will never get better, because it's know. so sad. It's, it's so sad that that's the it's case. So it's so frustrating, because it's the faceless bullies. So bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, because in my head, like, uh, Steins Gate has been brought up as, a, as this big, epic novel, and it doesn't really quite, it didn't quite make it to the same scale as I expected it to, I think is probably the, the biggest thing that I don't know. I don't know how to explain it really, but I thought that we were going to get this like now he's embroiled in the organizations and they're fighting each other, and maybe that's what Science Gate Zero is. But it really is very much just focus on this this low base level of like these are the characters interacting with each other, which is also cool, but it's definitely not what I was expecting when I came into the story. Uh, and yes, yeah, CERN is not a good time. Uh, 
Moeka turns out to only be kind of loosely connected. Like, like no, she's not as like intricately tied to Sen as I thought she was. I guess I should yeah. say. So Which she's is like, kind she's of a loose thread, the loosest thread. Yeah, My... the, the characters that we care about are not even directly like with Cern in the in the deepest way, which is really annoying. Yeah, and my thing with Moeka is sort of the same thing that was my issue with Sakuya from Rewrite, as we talked about in the last Shihaya podcast, in that I'm, I'm sort of, maybe I'm just jaded because I've played so many VNs in succession that this has happened mm. in, but I'm really just kind of tired of a story being like, hey, here is your blatant, bona fide villain, and by the end of the story, we're gonna try making you care about them because they're not really a villain, and I'm just kind of tired of that happening, because I mean, you know, I, I, I fell for the same shit everyone fell with with Moika. You know, once Moika kills Myri and you go through all that stuff in chapters five and six, everybody at that point, it's it's like it's like a sitcom. Everybody hates Moika, but. You know, you know that there's obviously going to be more to her, but I just, I felt it was way too predictable. Like, finding out Moeka's story, which we'll get to in just a little bit, is just like, you know, it, it was kind of a unique story, but it did not come as a surprise to me whatsoever. That Shocker, Maybe. the person we've been hating this entire time, is really someone you can maybe sympathize with or empathize uh, with, and the now, true villain is uh, a faceless bully. I think Moeka's... Like, the way they end up humanizing her is fine. I think it's, it's like you said, I expected every single turn of it. It's so, yeah. it's such a standard thing to present character and, oh, you sh don't worry, oh, there's, there's more to believe with her than you may have thought. But where I yeah. think, wh the part that I do think is interesting is not with Moika. I think they are able to do interesting character turnarounds, and that's with what they do end up doing with, uh, uh, Mr. Braun. Yeah. 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 I think Mr. Yeah. Braun's he's, he's really involvement good. is super interesting, and I he's... it's kind of sad that's so downplayed. Well, we can actually, yeah, we can actually get right to him. As long as I'm, I actually only had one thing I wanted to ask everybody about when Okabe goes to Moika's apartment. Like, obviously, there's not really much to talk about when it's going through the whole, you know, oh, she committed suicide, because as soon as that happens, you're like, all right, we're going to time jump to before she's dead. Sure enough, that's what happens. Big shocker. And she's, you know, being her usual phone-addicted self. But how did we all feel about the entire, like, fight between Okabe and Moeka? Because, like, for me, on one hand, I'm like, all right, this is kind of unnecessarily tropey. But on the other, I was like, hey, actual character development. Okabe is fucking doing something. Yeah, this, this is, well, <laughs> this is, like... Kind of the entire past couple chapters have been asking the question of where does Okabe draw the line? Um, you know, what is and is not he willing to do for the sake of mm -hmm. protecting Mayuri? And yeah, he's willing to just assault some some. He's you know he knows now he knows that Moika is trying to kill everyone. He has seen Moika kill Mayuri tons of times. But yeah, this is the, this is really pushing that sort of desperation angle as Moe also, as a, also okay, shout out to a, the old lady neighbor who's just like oh you kids and your oh you kids scenarios. you love quarrels <laughs> and there's a, oh you kids door. and you're breaking doors <laughs> down oh, man. She, she screams out I'm being raped and then that woman comes over like uh do I need to call the cops doesn't hear anything for a full 15 seconds guess not guess not oh you kids <laughs> yeah she's like a guard from a stealth game must have been the wind <laughs> no, it's, my it's actually social commentary on how uh, the Japanese think everything is a family problem or something like that. <laughs> it's social commentary yeah. on bystanders. Yeah, but I will say one thing about the whole turnaround on Moeka is that this was made in 2009? Maybe there wasn't much uh, of a trope back then. 2010, I think. 2010? Oh, my, my bad. One year off. <laughs> it is your bad because there was a huge trope in 2010, dickweed. Oh. I mean, honestly, it's not even that it was a trope. I think this handled it really well because it shows just how far... I mean, you said character development, right? But it shows just how desperate Kyoma has gotten, and even Chrissy, because she might have been getting her memories all along the way, like we've seen that um, the side characters do. And so for her, this might not even be as shocking as it would have been before, because she's just like, look, you know what you have to do. Kill Moika if you have to, or beat her up, or Get whatever you've got to do. 
Because you guys remember that one scene from uh, the Endless Time Loops, right? Where he's like, I could kill, I could rape. And it's just, oh man, I don't... That probably shouldn't have hit me that hard, but it did. And this had the same kind of effect because you can see just how raw it feels in comparison to the rest of the visual novel. Yeah. The way well, not to talk too much on that scene that we've already talked about, but uh, yeah, it did hit most of us pretty hard. Yeah, and I think there was a similar effect in this scene. For me, the way I sort of saw it is that, as is the case with the d even though Okabe is, like, doing something, like he's fighting, he's also running away. Whereas this is the first time that he is like, alright, this is something I need to face, otherwise nothing's going to be able to get done. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think we see a good progression um, with how with Okabe's desperation, where in, uh, in Suzuha's ending, we of course get that moment where after all the mental strain, he just kind of loses it for a second. Uh, and then in Luca's ending, we have that point where, of course, Good old, good old Kurisu, Kurisu Tina says, "Well, you could always just like beat up Luca. You can always just take it from <laughs> yep. him. You know, who, uh, who, who's do what know? you need to. I mean, uh, am I gonna know? I won't know. Who no, no one's gonna know. Um, and here we get the line of, well, Moeka has killed my friends right before my eyes many times. Yeah, I'll beat her up. Oh, I'll go through. Yeah, yeah, no. Well." I just think that Time Leap is a really interesting commentary on morality and how perception changes things, like with comparison to D-Mail. Like, D-Mail has a much higher permanence because you think about things. It feels real. You can't undo it as easily as, say, a Time Leap. So it's interesting to see that how that affects character decisions, too. Yeah, and the yeah. difference between Time Leap and uh, traditional time travel is that uh, with traditional time travel, if you go back in time, you have to actively change something if you want what you did in the other time to not have happened. But with Time Leap, as soon as you press that button, none of it has ever happened. Yeah, I was expecting the story to go much more into uh, Okabe's morality or uh, increasing lack of it and the... Uh... We didn't, but it's, I, I still think it's very interesting. Well, Suzuha. Yeah, yeah Suzuha. I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean I mean, it did. Yeah. And that's what's so strange, is it's like escalation of Okabe's state of mind of what he's willing to do and what Kurisu suggests. And yet we've already had the peak of that in the Suzuha round yeah, exactly. of ending. Which is so strange. Yeah, but <laughs> in the Suzuha so ending, he never goes through with it. Not I really. know, but I mean, still, it, it's the, like, t the tone in Suzuha's route though is much more. It's, uh, it's much darker. Dark. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel it's so strange. It doesn't feel as strange, I think, because it's almost like he goes through his own cycles, right? Like where he'll be depressed and he'll be like at the low point, and then he'll be at the high point, and he's like, "Yes, I have hope again. I fixed this one thing. Maybe this time I'll save Mayuri." So it's like he goes through these cycles of high and lows, and each time when he gets to a low, it's like, well, there's nowhere I can go from here, but, you know, but death, right. so I might as well do anything. Yeah, maybe I'm just a nitpicky son of a bitch, but I, I still <laughs> feel like that seems like a strange yeah. of, like, the, the, you know, the epitome of, like, where can I go with this time travel morality thing be, like, at the, at the, at the middle point of the novel instead of at the end. Um, well, that, 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 that just goes hand in hand with what we were saying last podcast about how it's really weird how the stakes get less yeah. and less and less mm -hmm. as yes. the, as yes. the arcs go on. But yeah, absolutely, yeah, that the, that's just ties in with the, the pacing being yeah, a, little, sorry. a little bonkers at times. Yeah. Now, You're right. so, something I want to ask is, uh, did anyone? So, this sort of idea of FB is of course brought in to play. Did. Anyone, or were, were people thinking it was going to be a character we knew, like John yes, Teeter? Yeah. Or, yeah, or did yeah, people yeah. think it was going to be a character oh, at all? Absolutely. I thought it was going to be somebody we knew, but I, like, took it a step further. I was going to guess that, like, because from the very start, Suzuha kept thinking Kurisu was a bad person. I was expecting it to be her. I was actual, Kurisu her. actually is a bad what? person. Like, like, yeah, I was expecting mm -hmm. because like enough time had gone by where Suzuha had been absent, most readers would probably have forgotten that Suzuha kept insisting that. It would have been perfect. Mm. But I'm kind of yeah. glad she wasn't because like in hindsight, it wouldn't have made much sense. Yeah. Uh, was I well, the only one who that up? <laughs> did, did Suzuha just completely quit her being suspicious of Kurisu after... Uh, after she realized that 
Carissa was probably forced into making the time machine for She sure. kind of warmed up to it, to it, but not like too much. Grim, whatever question you asked got like destroyed by your mic, so what, wait, could you say that again? Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, was I the only one who thought it was the old lady? Which, which one? Oh, the, the old lady next to Monica's apartment? <laughs> that would have been awesome! That would have been awesome! <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, but I, I really like, like I was saying, I really like that it ends up being, of all people, Mr. Braun. Yeah. That's a good pick. Everything that ends up happening, I don't care about Moika. Moika's fine. <laughs> I think she's pretty much Lucia. Um, Do for that anyone who, who anyone's listening along to a real podcast, I think she's person. <laughs> I think she's pretty much Lucia in that you know she is someone who got inducted into this cult. sort of thing this cult. when she was you know yeah when she was in a weak state of mind and you know all that all that all that stuff but much more interesting than her i think is is the character of mr broad and how he plays in i really wish this was a slightly bigger part of the story because even up mm. to this point i thought mr broad is very interesting like we i talked about the moments where he like relates to okabe grieving suzuha and whatnot yeah, yeah. i like that and i i think this probably would have been like i like this twist but I feel like it might have been, like, maximum effectiveness if they had, like, mentioned FB or something like that a few more times throughout mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's only like if it mentions it. Yeah, uh, PM, no, whatever. Guys, yeah. imagine if that old lady was FB. I mean, we probably no. get some scene where... We probably get no. some scene where that old lady goes to Moika and says, But I never left you. I was right next to you. <laughs> Please, no. Then she pulls out a gun. <laughs> Way to spoil <laughs> Steins Gate oh, Zero, like... asshole. Wow. If it had to be oh, anyone, if it had to be anyone, I'm happy that it was Mr. Braun. I yeah. also... I, level with me here. I also would have thought it would be really cool if it was Daru, but... I am. <laughs> what? Wow. So, for C. I would have made it So there would have been an improvement. I, like, I, I, I saw what I... Like, it in Daru's voice, like, Ooh! Kill my yuri chan Did you betray us, <laughs> Emperor? <laughs> Oh, I saw like a Dude, weird spell. Or at least before was... Daru, <laughs> instead, instead of Mr. Braun, before Daru shoots himself, he just goes, No! I just, I really want that. I, I want to see like just some kind of clip of him holding a gun to his head going, No! <laughs> no! <laughs> well, Brad Boy, I think we've got your next video all designed mm. out. God damn it. <laughs> Magus, go. I had like a weird spoiler shown to me where it was uh, some people talking about how it was Nak Naka Nakabashi Naka Boy, who was who was FB. So I was like, I don't know how that's a thing, but I guess so. Who is Nakabashi? Uh, that's, that's, that's um that's Kudis the asshole from, from the very okay. beginning. The guy from the very beginning. Okay. That's I'm dad. so Kudis glad that you. I'm glad that you've legitimately forgotten who that character is. Boy, <laughs> boy do I have a lot to yeah. bitch about yeah, when this part will, comes yeah, up. I will, I will join you there. Yeah, now. I was like, oh, that's where that character comes from. So he's with CERN, and there's this catered thing, and that's kind of what I was thinking. Then I was like, oh, it's Brian. I was like, oh, that's cool too. All right, so I, I, have a, I have a question for you all. <laughs> and it's sort of a, you know, how many saw this coming? So as soon as it showed the, sh the CG of Mr. Braun pointing the gun, I was like, he's not gonna shoot us. He's gonna kill himself. I saw him killing himself coming as soon as that CG popped up because I knew, yeah. even though he was a manipulative bastard, I knew he was effectively harmless, more or less. I think his facial expression does it. He's yeah. not very angry. He just looks very despondent. It's, 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 he reminds me of that phrase where he looks it's, sad. It's, 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 you're a bad guy, but you're not a bad guy. That well... I no, I know, ex I know exactly what you mean, and I definitely get that too. I wish that Mr. Braun is such a. I think he's a great part of this story. I yeah. really wish he had more time. Yep. So does tell he. us about your theory. Grim Gar. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, uh, my uh, phone ear listening thing cut out for a mm -hmm. second. Uh, still here. Um, right idea. I had a theory with this. He seemed genuinely serious when he was holding the gun up at first. It was, and like, I couldn't tell at that point because we knew his character, but we didn't know his character that well. All we knew is that he was fiercely predictive of Nye. 
And we didn't know he was a CERN agent, so at this point I didn't know what to expect from him. What changed was when he mentioned Suzuha. When Okabe mentioned Suzuha, that's when everything changed. You could see this yeah. light go on in Inoji's eyes. And he stepped back like, wait, what? Mm. And that's when he turned the gun back on himself. I think he was going to walk away until he said, until Okabe said Suzuha. And then, he was gonna, and then he decided to kill himself. Because if he went back on his mentor like that, then there's nothing left for him, you know? There's no yeah. honor left. You so this all obviously meant more to him than anything. Except exactly. Maybe, except maybe Nay. Yeah. Well, we saw how that went. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. It takes a long uh, drink. What did what did we think about that? I mean, I know this oh, is like I'm kinda, we're kind of chrono messing with the chronology a little bit here, but uh, fuck it, this is time for a podcast. You but, gotta go to the end of the podcast, experience the be the end the beginning of the podcast. It's how it works. But yeah, that the thing with Nye. We're not uh, skipping ahead. I mean, that's the next part. No, no. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, the thing with Nye. How do we feel about that? Man, I, is, this is I am not this is not Brock, This is not the case. But I'm sure somebody, or I'm sure this is not the case. I meant to say, but it's like they forgot Nye had a sprite and was Tenoji's daughter. So at the very last second, they tacked on that she's also. A time leaper and is uh, becomes a surgeon, a certain agent, and kills Okabe. It's hilarious. I think the thing with Nye is a little too ludicrous for my uh, yeah. mm -hmm. for my suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, really think that could have been taken out. Well, they took it out of the anime because it oh, doesn't fucking fit at all. Yeah, yeah it, it was just, it was a really it was a really um, poor way to tie up the Moeka story. Yeah, and like, there's some you know, weird They're videos. like, no, they, they insist, they foreshadowed it because of that one time where Okabe is like, hmm, someone else used this, and then you never hear about it again, and suddenly, Nai, fucking Nene's got a knife to Okabe's throat, and it's like, ah, I Get see. Get Nene. This is all a, of a I mean, it was a fucked up scene, which is great, but I don't know, I didn't really feel much. I felt weird about <laughs> yeah. it. It, it. It certainly catches you off guard, but not yeah, in the best it's way. Shocking. You know what but it's caught not me good. more off guard is fucking Okabe's face in that CG. It is disgustingly disproportionate. Yeah. <laughs> the great. Oh, like, like I heard you guys say, this the guy who made the characters aren't isn't exactly great at making men, right? Gosh, Daru is a behemoth of a man. <laughs> Daru is not a so man. Think... He is a super hucker. God. Yeah, that. <laughs> so going to become a chorus of Daru in this podcast. Well, now we're going to the problem. The problem is that Daru does so little for the story that mm -hmm. one of the only things I remember him doing yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anytime he gets brought up, that just plays in my mind. I mean, we might as well get it out of our system. It's the last one. Alrighty. Oh, don't worry. I'll say. I'll, we can close on Dar, but <laughs> for now, yeah, I'm not. I the the Nye thing, it is. It seems very much like it's a twist for the sake of having another twist. Yeah, um, yep. because just as quickly as it's introduced, it very it is not a important plot point for any extensive period of time. It, uh, yeah, it, it feels very, uh, very excessive. It, it just comes and goes like the wind, like the wind. So, reaching back around. Whoa. to... Uh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm never gonna get a, wis a wispy night wind. No. No. Let me get this point out. God. <laughs> no, go on. Okay, so I, I, think, I think we're all forgetting that there is actually a lot of. Uh, there's a lot that we as the readers can relate to Tenoji in this scene. Because at one point he says. Man, Moika, I really hated you. You know how much patience it takes to respond to all those emails. And I was like, <laughs> that, I was like, dude, me. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm just, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. Oh, boy, like, no Okabe, and they're like, don't shoot. <laughs> No, but <laughs> I had a train of thought. It's gone. Classic. <laughs> May comes Classic. in and just stabs Moika, and Okabe is like, "Boo!" And of course, Daru totally makes her just like, God, I can't wait to kill you in 16 years. All right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I remembered what I was gonna say. <laughs> it's that, um. <laughs> 
just quick to talk about Moeka herself. Um, I don't think that Moeka as a whole is actually handled super great. Yeah. In this, in this chapter, I think she is. But as a whole, I think it's very obvious that she is going to be the one that betrays you back in, like, chapters two through five. Or that she is at least one of the big candidates. And then all the way up until now, she does nothing except show up, be emotionless, or vaguely emotionless, and then, um, you know, then do her stuff. And while I think that the, the backstory they give her, the whole, at the end of your rope, cult offers you what seems like a light thing, is extremely predictable. I think it works. And I like how, unlike Lucia, she, um, she is very much, <laughs> she is very much shown as being in the wrong for what she's done in CERN. But it, th the main point is just empathizing with her, which I do. Even if it's like, even this, if this is a pretty tried thing, like I, like I think uh, most of us said, we really saw it coming. I still think it, the execution of this point works enough, and that Moika is enough is a big enough part of the story that, unlike like Ferris, I can I still care uh, enough. Now on to Bread Boy's point. I actually disagree with him on this. On, hmm, hmm. or at least how he feels about Moika. Like, fight, 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 yeah. fight, fight, yeah. fight, yeah. fight. I thought, Ooh. fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought when she, you know, pulled the gun at the party, I thought, okay, you, you, this is interesting. You can be an interesting character, and then we get to this chapter, which is not even really about Moika to me. It's more about Okabe and Tenarchi, who I think is a great character. Um, I do think that Mr. Bond steals a spotlight from. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mo Moika suffers from something I like to call the soccer effect from a soccer mm. motto from Fate mm. Night, because of course it's me. But yeah, it's. It's a, a story will want me to sympathize with a character, and they will go, here, Zasante, here's how you do it, and then they'll just show me a bunch of bad things happening to that character, usually in their backstory, and then that's it. And then I can't yeah. care, because I'm so sick of that. Uh, so you can let the last second sad story so you can get sad? Yeah, it's, where, where it's, always, it's always what that character... It's not what that character's been through, but what they do despite all that that makes me sympathize. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Moiko well, gives, me, gives me no reason to care about her. Really. I don't sympathize. Where I draw the line between this and Heaven's Feel is that um, Heaven's Feel asks you to care about Sakura. Yeah. In that the problem with Heaven's Feel is that Sakura is just this trash fire blob of a woman, and you're supposed to like legitimately like her, and it's impossible. If you like her, I don't think that you're a human. But, but um, Steins Gate, it only asks that you understand Moeka, which is why I think it's okay, is that I didn't have to like Moeka. Like, the fact that she doesn't have an ending, that this is just, this is just, you know, Moeka being closed off, that inevitably I'm never asked to, like, like her. I, it's just going, see where she's coming from, that I, 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 I can feel. Yeah, I, I'm i very glad that the game treats her not better than they do Sakura, and that you don't, it, chapter 9 doesn't hinge on you caring about Moika, and I like that. Go ahead, Austin. Uh, I wanted to get everyone's thoughts on this. If there was a Moika ending, how would you want that to pan out? I don't even know. I would like her to off herself. <laughs> what idea. I'm just saying. Wow. We, we meet FB, we meet some scientists, we go to CERN, and we side with them, and that would be the ending. It would be the ending that I've wanted since day one. Dude, you that want the chaos be. ending? You yes. want joining CERN? <laughs> I want the to bad see... ending. Um, yeah, you want Tenoji to recruit you into CERN. Yeah, I literally want the ending that would that actually be like. pretty... It would be, it would be very cool. It would be very cool like, to side with CERN. Yeah, and then Okabe I, busts into the lab, kills Mayuri, and I was like, no! <laughs> I mean, uh, they could go. They could go the angle that Okabe joins CERN, so that yes. like, so long as he's working with them, they will leave the rest of the members alone. Yep. yep they could yep, go yep, that yep, angle, yep, and yep, I think yep. that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah that would be really in cool. In an earlier podcast, we were talking about how uh, how it's interesting that we never get to see uh, this. Uh, yeah, I lost mm. my words. We never get to see this dystopia. A mm. lot of dystopian stories have you in the dystopia, and we talked about how it's interesting that. Uh, in this one, we're trying to prevent the dystopia and not get out of it. So I think it would be really interesting to see a Moika ending where Okube does join up with CERN and we get to see this dystopia actually yeah. happen. I and think so. If they need time skip or something, I feel like if okay. they did that, that would be to, 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 to just make the parallel even stronger. I think that would be a good Heaven's Feel because Okube would 
be making the world worse. He would be contributing to the dystopia that Souza has described, that is, so that everyone's been trying to fight against, but doing so to secure the safety of of just the people that he cares about, mm -hmm. which is an interesting moral thing and would be better than the way Yeah. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that. I was just thinking that the entire time when I was watching Moeka kill Mayuri, I was like, Moeka, why are you killing Mayuri? There's got to be some ulterior motive behind this because you should know that, like, if you've actually been researching Okaban, who has, like, surveillance set up, you know that he cares about Mayuri more than anything. If you put a it's gun to her head and say, and say, work with me, work with me, and, or else I shoot her, he will work with you. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I don't care. It would have been such an in, such an interesting like ending where he's where they just take Mary hostage, and, and then I we think, follow that like descent. I think this possibility also could have given the chance to play to something that I think the visual novel doesn't do a lot, and it's that Okabe is an actually smart guy. Mm. Yeah, like like they don't. He is you know he's being an idiot and making jokes all the time, and he's not like as smart as Maki say, but he is like actually he's definitely very intelligent. They don't, like, the way they present his character, you don't think about it. But this would give you the lens to show that, yes, no, Okabe is, like, actually an intelligent person and would be of value if he yeah. that is what he were to do. What I want to do is, yeah. and I guess I want to challenge what you were just saying, in mm. that if she puts, like, a, like at, at this point in the story, is that what you were talking about when you said if she puts a gun to my ear's head and says, I mean, me, I would have like, I mean, I was and, mainly and thinking, point like, story, earlier. Earlier in the story. Okay, but, earlier, yeah. sure, because at this point in the story, Okabe's just like, well, if you don't kill her, she's gonna die anyway, and yeah. I'm not gonna die, so fuck you. He wouldn't do that. Obviously, he he's, he's already her. reached... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm speaking of a hypothetical novel where Maru's death is, is not necessarily insured, um, or in a situation where Okabe jumps to a slightly different, like, attractive field. I don't know, like a... A, and uh, what, a Charlie attractive field or whatever, where it's like, I don't know if Murray's going to die or not, but Moeka hasn't shot it yet, so maybe there's a chance. You know, that did sort of thing. Say, wait, did you just say Charlie attractive field? Yes, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Alpha Charlie. Well, well. Yeah, no, that's it's it. Alpha Bravo Al Al Charlie, Jesus Christ. It doesn't alpha matter. Beta it doesn't matter what the names are. That's how the alphabet works. Alpha beta it doesn't fucking matter. Alpha field. Do 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 the door field. Hey, uh, alpha, 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 beta, Charlie. Oh! I love the Charlie. Charlie. Oh! 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 I, uh, what the message? Sure. Maybe in Daru's time, I don't know. Oh, oh my so god. So what back? Hmm. Doesn't matter, the oh, man has nothing to say. I guess You're not. Nah, keep going, we're, we're already way past that. I don't really want to jump way back to either Luka or to Moika ending, so let's not. <laughs> Alright, so then I just want to... I just want to ask... I, 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 I think of this as the only easy DML decision. Like, as soon as it comes time to send the DML, how many of you were just like, fuck, send it? Yeah, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, reverse mode has passed. Okay. Darn. Oh, I'm a character I so care so little about. So yes, we we smash that D mail button, um, and then at that point we're essentially back where we started after the very first um, divergence at the very start of Yay. the novel, where it's like a circle. Yeah, and it, but at this point. At this point, at Magus, you called it from the start. At yeah, this right point, ahead. Okabe realizes, well, fuck. Mayuri's going to die, literally no matter what, unless we jump back to that attractor field, where I literally see Kurisu die. I have to pick mm. between them. There is no mm -hmm. winning. And well, that's like, we all what he saw thinks. it coming, but the game did a really good job of making it feel as hopeless as it was. Yeah. True. And welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with Bread Boy. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not sure. I'm. I'm not sure if anyone here agrees with me, but um, not getting into the endings yet, but just like kind of the idea of them. I don't like the true ending. I don't like 
Um, then we'll I don't talk like about that when we get to the true. No, but I'm saying like I like the fact that the important this this part of the story calls into the uh, focus boy, the idea okay. that there is. Why are we talking like this? What's going on? Has well, my voice has dropped an octave? Yeah. Has, yeah. What? What? You just dropped what? in pitch significantly. I, d you I have a deep, yeah, a deep voice, like, old man. You're, you're, huh? you're, you're, you're like, <laughs> like, 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 I don't know what's going on. Going up for like a big boo. It's okay. Wait, I think is it's it better now. No. no. Okay. Well, I guess this is my voice from now on. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know what's happening right now. But <laughs> yeah, I like how this section of the. I, I must sound ridiculous to everyone. I like how the section of the novel uh, plays up this sort of moral dilemma in which you have to make the ultimate trading of lives that you like you did with Ferris's route, except this time it's only with people that you care about. My god, it's like you I'm got like... a chip stuck in your throat and you're just not swallowing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how... Uh, Too easy. You killed my train of thought. Someone else... <laughs> I don't oh know what god. I was going to say. I take it, Brett. I got you, fam. So, the problem is, in my mind, and I think this is where you're going with this, is that the entire novel we've been set this idea of equivalent exchange, and how, like, you gotta trade people's happiness, and at this point in the novel, my only thought was, okay, so Mayuri ending, Mayuri lives, and Kurisu ending, Kurisu lives, and the true end, everyone lives, and everyone's happy. That sounds like it undermines the fucking lessons of the novel. It's I'm sure they'll now. find some other way, you, you are back. I'm oh, sure they'll find some way of dealing with that without just popping out and not having any sacrifice happen. Yes, yes, Ma uh, yes, Benji. Uh, what I was thinking was that yeah. throughout the entire game, especially mm -hmm. with your normal with, uh, again, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Good. Mission accomplished. I, I did something anyway. Um, yeah, I like th how throughout the entire game, it's particularly with Mayuri's backstory, with Ferris's arc, mm. and even with uh, with Suzuha's arc a little bit here. The yeah, whole idea has been like that tragedy, bad things happen in life, that we can't do anything about that. And what we have to do as people is learn to deal with that. Mm. You know, Mayuri is all about how she had this trouble coping with the loss of her grandmother. Ferris had to deal with losing her dad, and the ultimate message was that trying to run away from that or trying to reject it is not right it is not good for you and it is not the moral thing to do so you come to the end here and the fact that you can make a choice that rejects that is nice i guess no, but it feels yeah. very it's it's a, it's the exact same problem i have with uh with the way with the ending of little busters the same reason that i don't like the ending of little busters very much is the same thing here where it feels like the entire story is building up to this sort of idea, and sure, the ending is- the true ending is very happy, it's beautiful, but it is so not what the game was about up until this point. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you could, you could argue that uh, ever since Mayuri's deaths, uh, plural, plural, there's been this under- very, I hesitate to call it a theme, of, of fighting fate, but no, I, I find much more value in the theme of history not being rewritten having to accept a sacrifice yeah but let's let's work our way up to this a bit i like the start of chapter 10 particularly the way it characterizes again and this is a co of course it does but i like the really like the way it spends time characterizing my and Kurusu. i think Kurusu in particular gets a lot of very good moments where she gets we get to peel back the mask a little and have some intimate moments with her how did everyone like washing out the the bad taste of moika and uh, working our way up to the conclusion. What did people think? What did people think of the characters for one? What who, who who did you want to see live? I wanted Kurisu to live, and I want to live. not not just because you know I, I I like her and stuff like that. It's it sounds awful, but really she's just so much more interesting than Mayuri. Yeah, I wanted Kurisu to live too because uh, she just develops more and is a, a, a more driving force in the story oh. than Mayuri is. Mayuri's... She's not flat, really, but she's mm. she plays the emotional crutch to Okabe, and I'm not very much a fan of that. Kurisu is just 
there and she develops and i forget who said this but someone said that the way she texts okabe as you acquire more true end flags this was me changes to be more effect okay yeah thanks ronnie that it, she becomes more affectionate through her texts and it's, it's very nice it's a nice subtle touch and i love her so much more than i do my art so which uh, yeah i i would follow that up with i think most people wanted kurisu to live because they were doing that. They were going through Kurisu's character development, and I feel like some people might be more inclined to have Mayuri live if you haven't gotten to know Kurisu on that level and tripped any true end flags. And that's yes. that might be why you only get the Mayuri ending if you haven't tripped a single one. Well, like this is where you come for, in, Max. For example, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I also didn't get true end flags this time, and like. I think the biggest moment that Kurisu has, or one of the biggest moments for sure, is when she tells you in like chapter six or something, when she tells you, uh, it's before that actually, but whatever, or in the game, when she tells you her backstory about how she grew up with her dad and how her dad grew to hate her and stuff, and that just doesn't happen if you don't get yeah. the two if you don't get two red flags after that point. So if you don't, ha and if you without that scene, I think. Without that, Kurisu feels not nearly as fleshed out as Mayuri. Because without that, you don't have any sense of where she's come from, where she's been. You only have this... You have who she is, which, you know, Makisa is a likable enough character. But... E and even with that, I feel I find that Makisa is a much more enjoyable character. I think she's very likable. Mm -hmm. But I think that Mayuri is... Uh, it feels more central to what the story is about. Not in the literal sense, in terms of like the actions because obviously my is just my but what the game is like trying to say it seems like my is more closely tied to that especially if you are lacking as as you were hypothesizing both of you that without those moments makuse ends up feeling not nearly as weighty a character and yeah. so yeah it's easy it's easy to go um, well my i did because i did that on my first run through i did my end first i didn't get any flags so I didn't see that stuff about Kurisu. So even the scene in Radikan when Kurisu is is like, "What are you? Gonna, what decision are you gonna pick?" I was like, "Well, you have to pick Mayuri. Like, she cares so much more about her. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening here." It, it the scene almost feels out of place. It felt a little bit out of place. I was like, "This is like a really intimate moment. I don't really feel like any of the build up has been here because it had, it had it. I had to go back through and get all the 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 flag scenes in order to feel like that scene like had its full impact." Um, I really wonder when the developers were designing this, whether they designed it with you getting, you know, a true end flag or all the true end flags first, or if they designed it with getting Mayuri in mind first. I wonder what the, like, intended, you know, read order is. Because, yeah, like, it felt weird without having the backstory about her father. Were you going to say something, or you just, you just, just have a little sneeze there? Ooh. Feel nice. The well, ghost of Dara is like, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know if anyone else did the same thing as I did, which, mind you, going back to get all those flags was a pain. I missed them the first time, yep. so I ended up cheating, <laughs> uh, which I had no... I, I, I cheated to also get the final CG, which is amazing, because it's... Just what is amazing. the final CG? It's, it's, it's just it's a, all it's of a them. cake. It's just all of them in a group. It's everyone hanging out, and there's a cake, and in the middle of the cake is my face, and that's all that I remember. Um, yep. Yeah, it's great. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I got four of the five flags, then I missed the fifth one, because you don't have to respond to it, you have to just look at the email and it didn't trigger, it was what happened. But I missed it somehow, so I had to cheat. And I have no shame in doing that, because having to go through the entire novel slow ass skip function to try and get those flags is just <laughs> stupid. I don't know what the developers are thinking. Slow. It's stupid. Yeah, I, don't I, don't think it's I, I like... I like how ultimately, um, both characters end up being very fittingly about, um, uh, not living in the past. M uh, Okabe helps Makise not obsess over her failures, or her feeling like she failed with her connection with her father, uh, obviously Mayuri with her grandma, but I think in, kind of inherently, uh, Makise is a more likable character, <laughs> just because she takes that more active role. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't think... Uh, the way that they structured the endings and made it so kind of... It, it's so 
not the clearest how to get uh the flags yeah the no. flags they don't yep, make themselves very clear without a guide it's really hard actually like yeah. very legitimately difficult to do I don't and even know. I don't know that that's. I don't know that I like that. Because <laughs> nothing even pops up when you get a flag. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the guide, you're like, all right, I picked this option in the text, you know, the text screen. Assuming that you figured out how to get the first flag without a guide, right? Well, knowing that the the, the flags come from the text. Yes. And then you've got to just kind of guess. I actually have something to just remind me in case I forget. Once we talk uh -oh. about the endings, I have I, I have something to address that because I think uh -oh. it was intentional. I mean, obviously sure. it was intentional that they did it that way, but I think I think I know why, or at least I feel like I might know why. Sure. I'm down to down to talk about that. Unless you want to just take care of that now. Same. Sure, go for it. Okay. Uh, where yeah, exactly are we? Actually? So I mean, right now we're, we're just got, vaguely talking. About yeah, we've care. got the rainy talk with Karisu, but I mean, if anybody doesn't have any thoughts, we can just go to the endings. Hmm. I just want to say what um, uh, I just kind of want to echo what Magnus was saying and saying that I think woo! that in being an intimate moment. I think it's fantastic uh, at that. Whether or not it feels deserved, depending on how many flags you've tripped, is another thing. But I think yep. the strict directing of the scene is really, really good. I think you very much can feel the connection between the two of them forming and this sort of like, yeah, very heightened intimacy. Uh, it's just, it feels weird if you haven't gotten by Karizu's flags. <laughs> well, hmm. I think it was fitting in just about every route, if only for the fact that Chrisu has been there through every route, helping Okabe figure out what to do. Yeah, helping Okabe figure out what to do to, mm -hmm. like, solve each email. Because he never would have figured it out by himself, let's be real. <laughs> and... Yeah, without, without Makise telling him to assault Luka, we would never would have gotten in the end. Yeah, Okabe yeah, would have been true. like, dude, Daru, oh. how do I help this problem? And he should have... <laughs> 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 right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is my new least favorite joke. <laughs> I thought it was interesting too, the use of kind of rain as this separating force. Like, they're basically isolated at Radikan. Yep. Like, there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do. They're just there in the dark, and it's very atmospheric, I want to say. Like, kind of intimate. leaving them. Well, exactly, right? Very intimate, because it almost forces them to be real with each other. And I don't think they ever would have had that talk otherwise. And this because... is where they, uh, this is where they fuck in Steins Gate EX. I believe it. I believe it. Let's go. Uh, 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 Let's go. Man, I love the yeah. translation quality with this. La, 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 science. There's just that one scene where, uh, I'm, okay, I don't know the exact Japanese, but it's, okay, so it's after, uh, God, <laughs> sorry, I completely lost my train of thought no, there. It's, it's Ohio gozaimasu. <laughs> so what? it's, uh. It's right after Okabe is talking about who he wants to save, and he's like, well, I want to save both of you. I'm pretty sure in the original Japanese, she just calls him a massive baka, but in the translation, she's like, you motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, scene I really like. I especially like the ways that Okabe has been dealing. I mean, this is obvious to everyone, but like, the way that it contrasts, the way that he deals with other problems, like, whenever he has a problem with time travel, it's like, I'll just go talk to Kurisu. Hey, I gotta get it from Luca, and Kurisu, you should just, just beat her up. I gotta get this thing from Oika, you should just assault her, it's fine. Kill her. Yeah, that'll work. And then he's like, Hey, Kurisu, I have this problem, and it's not concerning someone else this time, it's concerning you. How do we deal with this? Because, <laughs> like, if it was anyone else, she would have been like, I don't know, just kill, just kill the person. But now it's directly concerning Carissa, which Carissa, I think is pretty I cool. I have this problem, and it concerns you. And she's like, just kick their ass. Yeah, just kick their ass. Whatever they are, he's like, ass. no, I said I had to actually kill you. Now, of course, uh, this <laughs> the scene the scene is effective, but I, th I think much like with Malika, the conversation knew exactly. But of course, she's gonna say, "Don't choose me." Why? <laughs> I'd be more so. They should have had Maki say, "Go, you know what, Okabe? I want to live." <laughs> yeah. Just to make it a little, just to throw a wrench in things a little. I think. I mean, it's a very, it's a very standard scene, but I think it, it does. It's, it's cool. Like, uh, I mean, that's what everyone has done yeah. so far. Whenever anyone has been like, when Okabe's like been able to explain himself as to why he's just in a demail in the end, everyone consents to it. And I like less. that. Um, and I, yeah, I like that. That's a theme that 
it is Okabe who has to decide to kill someone. It's not someone else trying to like stop him in the end. It's always him at the end that has to send the demon. It's him that has to press the enter key. It's not someone else making his decisions for him, which is really cool. Yeah, because I think it that plays into this sort of idea that everyone at their core realizes that they can't just keep that they can't run from yep. these things yep. that bother them. They can't escape into it's really just escapism and that mm -hmm. ultimately that Literally it's not worth the, this price which is cool mm -hmm. and yeah the yeah. stakes just the personal stakes for okabe um haven't been in a straight line per se with the arms no. but they definitely come to a head with makise here yep so let's it's get cool. into the endings oh God. i already oh, like I, like i said i like both awesome. the kurisu and my endings more oh austin go uh, well, I wanted to point out that uh, Carice's behavior in this scene and the following scenes, uh, at least in her version of Chapter 10, uh, really kind of pissed me off. Because, oh because Okabe said, okay, Carice, I want to save you and Mayuri, and she's basically like, you bitch. <laughs> just like, just why? And she, she kept doing that. She just kept being so hateful to him for for, you know, not wanting to choose between his friends. And uh, I still like her as a character, but it was really hard for me to be on her side during those scenes, because I just didn't agree with how she was handling it. Uh, I actually disagree with you on that one. Like, I get where you're coming from with that completely, oh. but I think I almost respect her more for how she reacted to that, because think about it this way, right? Like, you're giving yourself up so somebody else can live because you were supposed to die anyway and you know that so how do you feel when the person who's engineering this whole thing who's got to make it happen is waffling about it like she she wants her death to actually mean something and she's worried that okabe won't go through with it and would make it meaningless so she needs somebody to be strong for her in this case and i'm not saying the whole you know ah women are weak that's bullshit but it's the fact that if she's going to stay strong with us, she needs somebody else to back her up on it so she can, you know, keep a stiff upper lift, so to speak. Yeah. All right, I can, I can understand that. Now, Rennie, I don't know how we got so far away from that, but you were going to tell us why they intentionally made the true flag so vague. It actually leads into what Breadboy was going to lead into. So before <laughs> I do this, how did we feel about the Carisu ending, everybody? It was Who fun. That was, yeah. that was something. I feel like it shouldn't have existed, kind of. I mean, it's... It's basically part one of the Mayuri or the true end, and then it just kind of stops. stops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. stops. Now, that ending for me is why I think the true ending flags are so vague. So you get that ending if you trip so much as one flag, but not them all. You get the Mayuri ending if you don't trip a single one. So if you get the Mayuri ending, you have either ignored Karisu or said all the wrong things to Karisu. So you will. Oh, well, you only have to do it know. once. To be fair, you only have to miss the first flag because you the others literally become... have to not pick up the phone, yeah. which is really hard to do by accident. You you just Anyways. have to. No, the first flag is a uh, isn't it a text choice? You know, it could be wrong. I might, I might be remembering, I'm but sure uh, you, anyway. you just have oh, to there you, go. you just have to miss the first one. You don't have to. None of the other options show up at all. Anyway, so <laughs> what I'm getting at is yeah. that if you get so much as one, but not all of them, you get the Kurisu ending, which is the true ending, just part one. Now, the way the ending is structured, it sort of gives you a sense of all right. Clearly, this this is not over. You know, this is this is a cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger. And I think they made the true ending flag so vague because it's very obvious through the Kurisu ending that, you know, when things aren't over, obviously something else is going to happen. It has to do with Kurisu because it's her ending that you get. And so that makes you, when you replay it, you know, you're either going to, you know, you're, you're obviously going to think, all right, I'm on to something because I didn't get the Mayuri ending. So you're going to keep talking to Karisu and maybe try different ways of talking to Karisu or talking to her when you normally would have ignored her. I feel like the Karisu ending is sort of a hint and the, the true ending flags are vague, but if you pick up on that hint, then, you know, for somebody who's not using a guide, 
suddenly it sort of becomes almost like like a social experiment kind of thing almost fun in a way if you're into that kind of thing so i think that's why i think they were that vague because that is the what what magus i agree with you i think that that is the intent uh i'm going to compare this and this might be a strange reference to some people who don't know only vaguely know what this is there is a short story called i have no mouth and i'm on screen oh Oh, it's fantastic and god this is relevant Trust me, this is relevant. There was a, a video game made based on that short story, and it, it is a it is it is a Moon Logic trial and error point and click puzzle bonanza. The game is like ten hours long. However, many of the the answers to the puzzles are so obscure. It's designed that you will take hundreds to beat it, and that is intentional because it's supposed to simulate the the main characters in their fight with, against like an AI that's trying to entrap them in purgatory, basically. Um, and this is a similar idea, but that also doesn't work because it's just not fun. And I think that that's, even if it is intentional to like give you this experience of going back and forth through Science Gate trying to find like the correct timeline, like I get that that's a thing, but it's just not fun. Oh, that's fine. I don't, I'm not trying I to argue cannot... that it's fun. Okay. Then we're on the same for page. Who are into like that sort of social experiment yeah, thing, it might be fun. Would. I personally yeah, I get everything would have been like, saying. wow, this is bullshit. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah it's it's yeah, not a fun mechanic. It's not good. It makes sense. I get what you're saying, but really, how many times did the developers expect you to replay the game with their slow ass skipping? I mean, we could we could calculate how many like permutations there are of the number of texts in the game, assuming that you realize I that all of them are with text. I know. I'm just saying you could do it, <laughs> and I know even the idea of like calculating how many possible like text permutations there are would would be boring. I, I absolutely agree with you that it's intentional. It's supposed to be like difficult to get to this ending, but no one in their right mind is going to do it. Um, yeah. Like, it's. Well, someone did. Now, um, mm-hmm. like, crazy bug. bringing this back to the Kurisu ending, um, try not to shoot me on the spot, Grimothy. I like the Kurisu <laughs> ending because the scene itself, I think, is really nice. Like, it shows that despite. Curtis's hardiness in the scene that we talked about prior to this and all that, you know, she even though she was literally going to leave for America, her, the scientist, the stone cold bitch, has a sentimental moment and runs back, realizing I never actually said bye. I thought it was a very nice moment. I thought it was a very nice scene, but the fact that it's completely unoriginal from the other two endings is what I don't like. Yeah. Well, actually, that ending, it's not original from the true ending, but it does have that scene where she runs in and basically, like, assaults Okabe and is like, Here, you will remember me! Yeah. <laughs> that happens in Kurisu ending as well, and I thought that that was a nice touch, yeah. so I'll give it I'll give it that. There is was that some... a, yeah, they did a really good job, like, trying to make you feel for Kurisu and really want to reach for that true ending so you could have that, but, like, not have her die afterwards so i get that i'll give it that it just didn't feel fully flushed out and it makes more sense with your explanation but that doesn't mean i have to like it i agree i agree with that uh exactly i also want to point i just want to shout out just a quick shout out to the underpaying voice actors because there is the in in the mayuri end uh okabe has this whole scene in the in the in the radicon complex and he's like i'm sorry i can't save you and then kusu's like no uh and there's a whole scene that, uh, in the in the Crystal ending, that scene doesn't happen. I was like, oh damn, they're saying different things. He's like, I can't choose. That's really cool. But then later on in the Future Gadget Laboratory, everything slows down and the music like stops and it, and then Okabe says in the exact same tone of voice as he did in the Radicon Complex in the. I'm sorry, I have to choose my area. I'm like, is that the same voice line? Is that the exact same voice line from the other scene in the Mayuri end? Because <laughs> it sounds like the same voice line. It sounds like they just copy-pasted the scene, but a little bit later. Yeah, I, thought like, it was, such... I thought it was a weird directorial choice that in the background, so... you just, you know, it's it's very serious, but then you just go, do <laughs> That's it. It's just such a strange, I don't know. I, I felt really weird. There's a lot of stuff between the, the three true endings, or the, or the, sorry, the three major endings. It's just cut and pasted, and it feels weird. Um, but yeah, just a nitpick, but it just, it just felt really strange. <sighs> but I did, uh, I did enjoy the true ending when we finally got to it, even if I have some problems with how it's, 
how it undermines things. Yeah, so, I, mean, I think stories do this. A, I think stories do this too a little too frequently, where they want to tell a sort of bittersweet message, but then don't commit enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the 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 whole message is kind of inherently bittersweet, where it's about not li living in your fail failures or tragedies. It's about accepting the fact that bad things will happen, and you gotta just pick you gotta keep going you gotta look for ways to cope with that and keep moving towards the future but we also love all of our anime characters and we could gotta it, let them be happy yeah. which could it possibly be that they switched messages midway through and then switch messages in the true ending well, well my, my question then is what is the message of the true ending if because what every, because everyone just wins and there is no it's better to have a, it's better to have a it's better to have a time where you don't know what's gonna happen Oh, well, I've been trying to say Red, this from the beginning. Look, let me tell you what happened, Brad. Some Hit beautiful me. writer, some beautiful writer wrote this story, and they they made this theme, and it was you can't always be happy; you have to choose. That was that was the message they wrote, and then uh, some corporate executive came in and was like, "We can't end this. We can't have a sad ending. The kids won't buy plushies of our characters if they are happy." So the writers put in a happy ending, and that's that's what that's what that is. Yeah, but that's the, what the, the true ending is. also had a message of its own. Hmm. Cynical mag. I, I mean, yeah, I, I feel it's exactly how I feel about uh, good old little busters. That I, it's it feels like it is happiness for the sake of happiness, and that happiness is kind of contrary to the fact that the message is that sometimes yeah. life isn't happy, and that's fine because that's life, and we gotta live with that. Yeah. You're awesome. All right. Well, a lot of you have continuously said how uh, you you don't have, like how the true ending is just like you know save everyone. Everyone's got to be happy. Uh, but that that's not what how I felt whenever we got to a true ending. The Steins Gate world line is not supposed to be everyone's happy, everyone's saved. It's opportunity, and anything can happen on that world line. They they say that so many times. Just because we don't see anything bad happen doesn't mean that it doesn't. Oh, that it the world line can take any direction. It's it's the same as the Suzuha ending, where the last thing we see is them getting in the time mm -hmm. machine to go back. We don't know what's going to happen with them. They might fail. They might not. It's the same thing with Steins Gate. We don't know what's going to happen on that timeline, so you can't just say that they're saving everyone, because who knows? They might not have. But I mean, they literally save Mayuri and Kurisu, and yeah. also, mm -hmm. what's her face, Moeka, get stops being a certain agent, and so does Mr. Braun, and also, uh, it, 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 I mean, sure, the world might literally still go into dystopia, but everyone who matters gets the happy step, mm -hmm. yeah, which they, feels ingenuine to what yeah. the story's trying to say. Yeah, if they want to be ambiguous about it, they should make it ambiguous and not yeah. a very concrete ending, which is what we got. And yeah. I very much... <laughs> I was very angry when Suzuha came back. And it, yeah. this is not what it is, but it felt like a Diabolus Ex Machina was going to happen. I was very angry at that, and I'm like, what is this Eden of Versailles horse nonsense? But, <laughs> what... Yeah, I, I'm very much just going to echo Red Boy and Max's points that I don't like this ending. And even if it is a new theme, that theme does not, or is not cohesive with the rest of the story, which is about living with your sacrifices and mistakes. And it, it, I, much, I, have, I find much more value in uh, Kurisu or Mayuri being sacrificed. Like, yeah. I should say that I like the sort of thrill of the ending. I yes. like how, you know, you have to you, you you go and it's high stakes and you try and you fail and oh he's gonna break but then no you just have to do it better and we get the message from the future and you gotta do the clever thing with the with the freaking lightsaber the lamp thing and fake ball like i like how it's clever you're so dismissive, you're so dismissive. I it's great <laughs> I, I like yeah well i mean i like how it's a clever thing you know i like how it's I like how it's smart. Yeah. But I don't like how ultimately that smartness isn't going towards making the story feel cohesive. Yeah. I mean, I mm. look, look, like, I. I oh, oh, wait, sorry, just one more thing. I like how. Okay. I also like how from the beginning you can see this. When you reread the prologue of the story, 
you see that all of these things were going on. And that's mm -hmm. cool. I really like that. I like how the, the end has the beginning. I just don't like how together it feels like it's kind of trying to have its cake and eat it too. Yep. I just want to say for the record, first off, call all that shit in the prologue. That was great. Uh, second off, I will, I will fully admit that I was more hype for that final CG, the one that's the thumbnail for this podcast, than like anything else in this novel so far. Even saying like, I don't know what with the rest of the story. I think that it undermines the themes. I, w I still enjoyed it. I still had a blast and that final CG, I was like, fucking mint, loved it. Um, so I still enjoyed it. I don't, I don't think I'm quite in the same camp as Z-Man who's like, Crucial and Best Ending. Uh, but there are there are problems. <laughs> there are problems yeah. in the story. I know. I know. Mag, I know. You, Magus, very much agree that it devalues the theme. And I yeah. My main I absolutely. Problem. I'm absolutely with you on that. And like, I mean, I I don't want to just keep destroying this ending. But like, what? same thing. This is a problem I've had the entire game. But the the I, the concept of reading Steiner, and especially when other people just do it. Yeah. I don't like either. Like cool it, it, it is cool when okabe does the like oh could he still my assistant and she you know she just snaps i'm not your assistant yeah. and it's like wait what am i saying that's cool but like <coughs> calm down just chips man calm down, calm down. <laughs> chips are too intense it's cool but why what what yeah, why can she do that why can yeah. ferris do it i mean there this is this is those sort of moments are sort of like they're kind of like the rule of cool, you know? Look, it's because it's, it's fun, it's because it's really yeah. cool, and it's very heartwarming, and that is cool. I like the characters, which is why I don't hate the true ending. You know, I like seeing these people happy, because I like these people. It just feels a little insincere. I can get we, that. We all know the why is at least an important question, after all. The why doesn't matter, so... Mm. Yeah, re reading Steiner is a deus ex machina, and at its very core, it's just a thing that's been happening throughout the story. And in a story where they try to at least explain the time travel and all the science behind it, reading Steiner is just there and it happens mm -hmm. and we don't know why it exists or where it came from, but it's what gives the game its pathos and yet it's just left to the wind. Now let's talk I mean, about... Oh, go, go. almost back. Huh? Oh, I was just saying go. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no, it's all good. Yeah, no, I think this is actually kind of a nice touch. Like, yeah, okay, the part that bothers me was definitely the fact that everyone just spontaneously starts to remember. At first, it could kind of be excused, like, um, just getting random flashes or kind of like a dream world type scenario, but Kurisu at the very end remembering definitely kind of took away the, uh... It's like they're destroying their own system, right? It, it, <laughs> I still like the route, though, yeah. so we can argue about that, that's fine, but... When yeah. it comes to Steiner, I think that it was a nice touch because it adds kind of an element of mysticism to it, which in a science-based visual novel wouldn't normally be a good thing, but everything else besides reading Steiner makes sense. So having this one thing that doesn't make yeah. sense is kind of the last frontier. It's the thing that can't be explained, and that's so theoretically the thing that Okabe later comes to understand as evidenced by the divergence meter. So I think it's nice having one mystery that can't be answered yeah sure presenting oh. it like that is 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 not critical it's valid yeah i would have i would have loved this ending so much more if it just happened the way it happened and then at the final cg uh Kurisu just does not remember does not reading star does not activate yeah. and it's just implied that they all come to be friends anyway and certain yeah, persona like, game does this perfectly yeah, yeah the idea the, this idea that even without their memory they are the bond that they share and the kind of people that they are would bring them together anyway a certain certain persona game does it fantastic i uh, disagree because i'm talk a about... sucker for this kind of ending i love it well you're a sucker <laughs> in chair and I'll go there you go. oh um but to talk about uh, something i do love uh <laughs> i like future okabe i like future okabe being a part of the plot Seth nerd <laughs> Yeah, I like how he comes in and how jaded he is to the way everything is happening. Yeah. Uh, the way he is, is like riding on this last hope that he has in himself. It's a cool idea. It is a lot of cool things happen in this ending, even if I some of their impact is just a little dampened for me. Hmm. Yeah. 
I really like it. I like, like how a lot of the stuff that he talks about, who is was like, in a dark room. I was like, yo, I can just send you this this message now with with a little bit of video, even though he doesn't. Whatever. Uh, like he's like, I've just developed technology to do this now. Like, it's perfectly reasonable, which I really like. Um, you just, I have had 15 years to research time travel. I have been able to make these leaps in in uh, you know in science. The novel doesn't spend a long time explaining it, but it's just really easy to accept because it's Okabe, and the amount of like leaps that he's made in 20 days, you could easily see him going much further than that in 15 years. I um, always question why he was in a dark room. For the mysterious just... edginess, that's it. <laughs> or, well, is it or is the technology just not that great? Probably, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking it might have been easier to send it because um, you remember how much trouble they had even sending a email. Uh, email. Yeah, that's true. Like, many why, not just send, why not just send audio is, the, is my counter to that. Why did he not just send audio? If he was just going to show himself in a dark room to like prove that it's him, I'm sure Okabe would recognize his own voice. But that's uh, it's whatever. It doesn't matter. Point. Yeah, but you remember like you were looking at it. I love that point when he says, "Uh, there's this new world line. I called it Steins Gate. You know why I called it that? (laughs) Because it sounds cool." And I'm like, "No, no, you called it that because you say it all the fucking time." Well, yeah, because it sounds cool. Yeah, he says it all the time because it sounds cool. Because it sounds cool. No, I would have been much shit. I uh, no, I would have much. I would have liked it much better if he had said, "You know why I called it that? Because you never stop fucking saying it, you jackass. Grow up." <laughs> that wouldn't make sense though. No, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's that's what I wanted to. Apparently, see. apparently that that translation is a little bit different from what it originally was. Originally, the the line is, um, "I called it that because it doesn't matter," and it's like implying that like. He's so detached from this idea of time travel, and like, like this is like all he cares about is getting you getting Carissa and all that. But like, I don't know, I don't know how to like explain it, but apparently that's what the line used to be. Just that I called it Steins Gate because it it doesn't matter because it's a nonsense word. Um, just to show like how detached he is from causality. Why not call it? Something about that conversation I don't like though is that it's just Okabe telling you things you already know and mm. basically the events of the story. It's like Ryu she wrote. It's true. Well, I can argue for that too. It makes sense. It's it's proof because this whole time Okabe has been going back and forth between am I am I actually right or am I crazy? So this is like a weird form of proof proving that everything happens and that there is hope. Mm. Yeah. Did they ever yeah. actually say how they knew Steins Gate exists? Magic. Space I magic. That, I think, I think I, literally, I think this is how the conversation went. There is a new world line that has never been observed. Then how do you know it's there? We because calculated it. It's just, yeah, just it's like, very silly. We just, we, because we know, just, just, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, so just say another thing I like quick about this about this ending, just to, so I'm not, I'm not not just a complete negative Nancy, is that I'm a big fan of how uh, I'm a big fan of when Okabe goes back for like the he goes back to do it correctly to do the true and you know go back to do the timeline correctly, and he has that moment where he's kind of like he is like looking at himself and he's like you're in for a rough time you are going to go through one of the worst the worst month you will ever live but it will be worth it that suffering will not be fruitless it will you will see an end to it and just, it's very reminiscent of like a, of a certain key game that i like a lot and uh yeah that that sort of that little touch there i a big thing. I just yeah. kind of liked how it was all one huge loop, this whole story for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of loops, I like the Easter egg where you actually have to start the game back up again to get the last CG, and you get it in an email from the future. And it's Steinsgate uh, El Stai Congru. <laughs> that's, the, that's the address. Nice. Wait, wait. Cool. Alright, well, in that case, I'm just gonna... <laughs> uh, I've been waiting for this lens. <laughs> now, so, everyone definitely Dr. Nakabuji about who, how, fucking Kurisu's dad, the guy who you interact with once at the very start, and before you know he's Kurisu's dad, this dude doesn't play a 
single part in the story from here onward. He is literally only referenced as in his conference whenever Okabe thinks about the very beginning events. He is literally absent from the story otherwise. And then, and then, you get to the very end of the true end, and you find out he's the big baddie. What yeah. rock oh, oh, shit. I just, uh, okay, I, I'd be, okay uh, you know what? I would bitch less about that and bitch more about how Mayuri's Upa caused World War Three. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that too. That's, that's a that. causality right there. I called that my fact. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Metal Upa was gonna be the key to this whole novel. Yeah. I am to that's a great nerdy thing. Yeah, but um, Nakabachi being a Izanami from Persona 4 is so stupid. Yeah, it's the difference it, here though. He's just the difference here though is that I, I'm not a big fan of Izanami either, but I at least with Izanami they try and portray it as yeah. Izanami was pulling the strings the whole time. And y you were facing Izanami and just didn't realize it. Dr. Nakabachi does ZERO! Yeah. Yeah, he managed to be an even uh, worse claw device than Dollar. Ooh, the priest! <laughs> yeah, yeah he, All he's they only had relevant do. on the... Is it is the Alpha World Line the original? Which one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah he's only we started on was the Beta one, though. Mm. Mm. So then Beta's the original. Whatever, it doesn't one one really matter. One way Karusu yeah. dies yeah. in Beta. Yeah, line. but what I'm trying to say is, he's only relevant on one timeline, and you spend, like, 85% of the story on the other. Yeah. All they had to do was be like, yo, Nakabachi is a CERN agent and he's been sent back in time to kill his daughter. That's all they had to do. Is it a time yeah. in a CERN somehow? Like, it's the love. twist that he is her dad is fine as far as I'm concerned. It's the fact that suddenly he's the one that's causing all the shit that, you know, Okabe desperately wants to try and prevent. It's like, really? Really? Yeah, he, yeah. he's not foreshadowed at all. It's just no. not a good mystery. Well, yeah. see, if anything, it makes sense. Because you deal with each individual character and their route, and then that resolves and you move on to the next problem. It's almost like you're eliminating this string of obstacles in your way to getting to this goal you want. It's, uh, it makes yeah, sense. It just sucks. <laughs> it makes sense. The, the, it makes sense to me. It's almost like you're going full circle. So coming back to where he was the original issue, but you had to get there first. Yeah. Sure, but, like, you should... In a good story, you should have individual ob overarching obstacle. The fact that Nakabachi is the guy who's the over like the end obstacle, just it just feels off. It feels really off. Yeah, it's um, very out of the blue and yeah, is not like foreshadowing. Come on, it's not. No, I mean of course the thing the, the is called from the start. Back. Okabe is the one who kills her. Yeah, I know. I know that. Hello, hello. I'm the theory guy. Uh, <laughs> I was coming. I kind of. I was kind of umming and eyeing uh, in during the scene. I was like, "Is he gonna be Okabe and up stabbing him?" Because because he was hiding there, and I was like, "Oh shit! Is this gonna be when like Kurosu sh shows up and then no one else does, and then Okabe realizes that he has to kill her?" Not quite what happened, but uh, yeah, I yeah. hey Dude, hey Okabe, you were up. you were the one who caused your own problems. You fucking nerd! You did it. Um, it was a good time. I I I kind of liked the you know like the the twisting and the turning of the story. Even if I don't like Naka Naka, where the fuck is name? Naka boy, Naka boy. I didn't Naka like him so much, <laughs> but like, wow, got him. But I did like the kind of progression. You know, as we said, the kind of progression from I fucked up. Now I got to fix it. How am I going to do that? Let's make a plan. Like that's all I'm really not cool. Sure, I'm not sure how uh, necessary I thought it was for Suzuha to let Okabe fail once before he could yeah. show. Well, uh, let's have I mean, this entire scene where you try and fail, so we can gonna hate have me. an emotional roller coaster, and then up, right. up here's the truth. Right. Steins Gate. I'm dropping the name of the game, and then you can Brad, fix I it and a... do the same thing, but you just reel. Yeah, it, I, I, I have another I suggestion what. for you, Brad. Hit me, hit me harder. So you know how last time when you were like, "Why is there a happy?" End? Because people will like it more if there's a happy ending. And corporate executive who was like, "We have to have a happy ending." I'm gonna give the exact same answer. <laughs> okay, here, here's the thing. So here's why he had to fail once. Because to create science get zero and make more money. Shut up. <laughs> so, Hello. So he has to fail once because 
Future Okabe knows, okay, there is a way to save Kurisu. We can find the loophole and just make the other Okabe think he saw Kurisu's dead body. So this way, she can live. She doesn't have to be dead. But the only way Okabe, our point of view Okabe, can pull that off is if he... He, he, he believes in it. He needs to witness the failure. He uh -huh. needs to literally witness Kurisu dying himself, even at his hands, so that when the, so that he can commit. So that when he goes to fake the death, he can pull it off. Because if he has any reservations whatsoever, he's probably going to fail, and this is just going to keep fucking going. And Steins Gate Zero is going to come out. So, and if he, you know, if he. <laughs> If he doesn't <laughs> kill her, he doesn't have that commitment. He doesn't have that drive to pull it off exactly as it needs to be. I understand sort of what the reason is. I just think it is sort of, it ends up feeling like it is just making the story longer. Oh yeah, from, just, from a reader yeah. perspective, sure. Yeah. I, thought you were, I thought you were like, why did Suzuha need to do that? And it's like, well, there's a reason for it. It doesn't matter. It was a red scene and they get yeah, that'll teach you. <laughs> yeah. Nice one, Okabe. Had Osuzuha, whoever did it. I mean, it's kind of both. Also, but but also I'm just, I'm incredibly cool, single person. I'm just gonna say that's a, that's in, I entirely believe that nine percent of the reason the trend exists is to make more money. That is entirely what I believe. As a cynical mm -hmm. boy that I am. Um, but yeah, sorry. Please continue. Well, I was just gonna say. Uh, Shenanigans, time shenanigans aside, the last scene, I very much like. I like Okabe going around and giving the pins. Yes. I like how he says like yeah. future, future, when he that he's the one who makes them. I like how he says like future gadget member number six, lab member number six will come around, event in however many years, and this will be this will always yeah. be her place until then. That is very touching. Yeah. Uh, I don't, and we already talked about. I don't like. I'm not your assistant. But I like how he how he chases her down to give her the pin anyway. Yeah. They, there's there's a lot of uh, genuine emotion mixed in there, amongst everything else. Again, Ferris and Luke are coming back for the last scene in the game, and when they haven't mm -hmm. been relevant for hours. Again, just kind of drives home the point that Ferris and Luca don't really matter. But I still like seeing them because, well, Ferris can uh, Ferris is Ferris, but Luke is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Tannis is gonna wish he could be here to defend Ferris. Yeah, too bad he's not. She sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right you are, my man. Rip. Man, too bad, too bad Tennis isn't here to go, I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm <laughs> gay. You guys are the worst. Oh my god. Oh, blaming on you. You guys are the worst. <laughs> 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 Well, All right. Well, do we have any final thoughts on Steins Gate, lads? Well, I think Steins Gate is very good as a thriller. I think it's very has, its directing is quite good. It's very good at making you feel the scene. Uh, you know, I think that the chapters with the Mayuri killing feel very hopeless and intense. The parts like you near know, the true end, or they—they—they're good at feel, feeling uh, very powerful in the moment. And I think at times it's very sincere in saying these things. I like I really think the whole Mayuri story with her grandma and stuff is really well handled. I just wish well, I say I wish the ending uh portrayed reflected that more, but I have that ending. It's called the Mayuri ending. And <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really talk much about the Mayuri ending. No, that's fine. <laughs> It's not much to talk about. Me. Not much to talk about. Yeah, there's not really much it's to say. It's, it's your very typical something. happy ending. Well, I mean, I have fine. something I want to say, but uh, we'll say it then. Say it then. Cool. I will. I mean, for a chapter called Stardust Sky, I was expecting there to be a lot more parallels and references to like the Stardust handshake thing. Ooh, I didn't I get what that was. More Stardust and Sky, but there wasn't. Well, yeah, no, I mean they. They, they oh, made the Stardust handshake this big thing about Mayuri's character, and it wasn't even touched on in her chapter. I don't even think they ever said Stardust handshake in that chapter. At the very, very end, she reaches up with her hand. With one hand, sorry, with one hand she's holding her and with the other she reaches up to shake hands with the sky. Um, oh boy, that I really like, like hit by a car. 
I, I want to talk. Well, I, I want to talk for a second. <laughs> since you brought it up, uh, Maggle, I like that. I that scene because I like the way it kind of is like Mayuri is is reaching up to say goodbye, yeah. as opposed to reaching up like longingly as it yeah. had been yeah. before. He's holding Okabe's hand. She's see. able to put that behind her, it, mm. and that is very. It feels like she has come full circle at that point, and yeah. very nice. It's cool. It just isn't a very long scene. And no, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I would have really liked the, the Mayuri ending to be a bit longer because it's about the same length of the Kurisu ending, minus you know without the true end. Then of course Kurisu's ending gets a lot more to it. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. It's just less generic. I don't yeah. know what I would have wanted. Just something, something in Mayuri's ending. Just yeah. it's because I barely remember it. Um, unfortunately. It was fine though. Like Mary got a happy end, and we lost Kurisu. Went off to America. It was very sad. Yeah, it's not so much my Mayuri's ending, but I just wish Mayuri was a not not more. better character. I don't want to say better character, but more of a Kurisu more, more engaging engaging character. relevance. Yes, yes, active character. Exactly. Yeah, engaging. Ac active, I definitely think is the word because most characters don't actually do a lot. Okube does all of the things, and the point of that, of course, is to show that like everything lies on his shoulders. He is the god of this world. Uh, he is the protagonist, Kuren. He is the player character. He is the he's the guy in charge. Sword. He is the bone yeah. of his sword. Um, but that doesn't mean that we should just throw out other characters away when they're done with their plot relevance, which is kind of what happens. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty hyped to read Science Gate Zero at some point people have told me that the anime does it better. I don't know what to make of that, but um, I hear the characters are a bit more engaged uh, in that one. We'll see. We'll see. Pretty hard for it. Yeah, I, mean, zero I can win. say at least that, yes. I read like a couple of years ago. There you go. Alright, All right. well, it's been That's fun, lads. Fun, Everybody, give one last boo! <laughs> Oh my god, it sounds like We're a tornado. <laughs> the apocalypse is Super Hugo! Alright, we'll see you guys uh, later when we're... Uh... Oh, I... Yeah, that's right, vote in the poll. Please, the that's what you want. Beat right? Grisaya. I don't want a podcast for Sia. <laughs> vote for air. Vote, vote, vote for air. Vote for air. Different podcasts. Vote for air. I don't care. Vote for air. is also great. Vote for air too. Yes, vote for Canada. Vote DSRA so I don't have to participate. All right, bye.